Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I am really enjoying your questions. Um, so I want to answer another question that is, it's actually a big question about style um, differences in the dance of the belly dancer are more common in between countries and regions. So you have this big umbrella of uh, a, a word, belly dance, that is to describe um, movements or a vocabulary of movements or even different, I would say, um, different like labels within within the movements. And what I mean by that is um, a lot of these movements are done by just every day dancing in the house and celebrations but then you take those same movements and you put them on a professional belly dancer on a stage and they're really a lot of the same movements but they're done differently so for me I like to kind of focus on the differences between um where these movements are being done because that really makes a difference like if I'm watching my aunties dance in the living room I love them and we're enjoying each other but I'm not sure that that would necessarily read or transfer onto a theater stage <laughs> so you gotta know your audience right um and then I think that when I think about styles or stylization I think about the music right so you can really see differences in Turkish style belly dancers and Lebanese style belly dancers and Egyptian style belly dancers. And they're very nuanced, you know. I mean, um, when you're looking at these, these dancers, they're so beautiful and they're so unique. And I think what makes them unique is the essence that is brought in by that specific culture. So the Turkish music in its traditional form is a nine eight and so that I think that like kind of uh, movement vocabulary it does seep into the umbrella concept of the belly dancer and then um I same in Lebanon and in Egypt there's such slight differences and I remember when I was dancing in Lebanon I could even feel that the music was faster. So it was an, an Arabic song or an Egyptian song even. Um, but if a Lebanese band was playing, it it was always a little faster and it had like a little like pop to it, edge to it. And then when I would go to Egypt, I'd have the same song, but it was like, hey, <laughs> they were playing it slower and it was way more like I could like sink into it, right? Um and a lot of my movement vocabulary was exactly the same, no matter where I was dancing. But I would say it was like kind of the, the pop. I was giving her the speed in Lebanon was really different. And then of course in Lebanon, I was, I was, I had to wear heels. And then in Egypt, I did not. And I would get to kick off my heels and I would get to be barefoot, which would really change the way I would move. So all this to say, yes, there are, there are, you know, differences in stylizations. Um, but yeah, and you can see differences even in costuming. Um, and you can see also now that there's this big, I would say, um, influence of Russian and Latin American dancers in, in Egypt and the dance is changing uh, again and representing a lot of that movement form and style from those countries coming in and influencing what the shows look like, what the presentation looks like. So I... Oh, that was your question. <laughs> and I just love talking about this stuff because I think that it's really important to know that like, you know, when somebody says, oh, I do traditional, um, I don't know, Egyptian style. I'm like, uh oh, what does that mean? Because which era and which time frame? Because um, I don't think there's like one under the belly dance umbrella, even though I might not be crazy about the name. I really do appreciate that. It encompasses so many countries like th throughout the entire Swana region. And so you're all under that one umbrella. And so you can represent it all if you are educated to do so. <laughs> and anyway, so I hope this answers your question. And thank you.